On July 4, 1947, a strange aircraft had crashed in the desert in New Mexico, America. The area was contained at once by government agents. What it actually was has yet to be proven conclusively. For now, conjecture has become fact and rumor has become history. In 1984, an envelope arrived at the home of TV producer Jamie Shindella. The envelope, from an anonymous source, contained a roll of undeveloped film. The film contained what has now come to be known as the MJ-12 document. Roscoe Hillencoter, head of the CIA at the time of the Roswell incident, was at the top of the list of 12 members. It stated that these men signed a secret treaty with extraterrestrials from the spacecraft as a special organization answerable only to the president. It is now accepted that President Truman's signature was in fact a forgery, copied carefully from another document without his knowledge. Named as a member on the MJ-12 document was an MIT professor, head of the Department of Electrical Engineering, Vannevar Bush. In 1945, Vannevar Bush developed a memory expansion concept called Memex. It was a system whereby information recorded on microfilm was then projected directly onto a translucent screen. What he envisioned was the compression and rapid access of information. Even before the advent of computers, Vannevar Bush had already created the basis for our current multimedia explosion while at the same time, he was leading the Manhattan Project atom bomb experiments. Conducting sensory deprivation experiments using a variety of techniques, such as Native American narcotics and isolation tanks to probe the depths of the human unconscious, John C. Lilly believed his experiments connected him to cosmic entities by way of a broad-based communication network. Lilly dubbed the beings that were guiding him ECCO, Earth Coincidence Control Office. Soon afterwards, Lilly began work on communication with dolphins. These dolphins are incredible creatures, which are able to conduct an array of wide-range networking exercises via ultrasonic waves. Ted Nelson, a scientist who studied under the two cult pioneers, Vannevar Bush and John C. Lilly, expanded on their theories. He proposed a giant electronic library in satellites in stationary orbit, which could be used at any terminal on Earth via radio and telephone lines. He called this daring concept that would make an interactive global database a reality, Xanadu, after the mythical country. Also known as the Mongolian Utopia, where all written cultures would be forever preserved and live on for all eternity. This was Xanadu. And so it was the innovative concept called hypertext that would finally make it a reality. And Ted Nelson's name would go down in history as its esteemed originator. The Earth, while orbiting the Sun, has its own specific electromagnetic waves. Between the ionosphere and the Earth's surface, there is a constant resonance at a frequency of 8 Hz in the ELF band range of frequencies. This is called the Schumann resonance. However, the extent of the effect on human subjects of these Earth brain waves that the planet constantly gives off is impossible to quantify and remains a mystery. The human population of the Earth is approaching that of the number of neurons in the brain. Douglas Rushkoff proposes that the consciousness of the Earth itself might be awakened when all humans on Earth become collectively networked and resonate at the same frequency. The 
the evolution of the network would follow a neural model path. And just as neurons within the human brain are connected by synapses, the Earth itself would become a single neural network. Masami Eri, chief researcher at Tachibana General Labs, further developed the hypothesis of a worldwide neural network. His hypothesis proposed this wireless network whereby all of humanity would be plugged in at an unconscious level without the need for any technical support or ancillary device. Furthermore, he carefully encoded the Schumann resonance factor and inserted it into the seventh gen wired protocol on his own initiative. Upon discovering this, Tachibana General Labs dismissed Eri. One week later, Masami Eri's body was found alongside the tracks on the Yamanote train line. <laughs> 